Hello again, everybody. Zach Attack is here, my third review for February 5th, 2018. Well, yesterday now, because this video is uploaded a little bit later than I usually upload my reviews, but yeah, we're well, all for Monday, February 5th. From Des Moines, Iowa, the home state of Seth freaking Wallens, who's from Davenport, Iowa. And after all last week, the app map from the Wumble being a good one, while I had some minimum aside. Now, I thought this wall was was good. Not as great as last. We had a few squashes here and there. We had a couple good matches, including a, uh, two more qualifying matches for the Elimination Chamber, the men's. Plus, the women's chamber match got its participants, besides the women's champion, who had a little quipe to pout with the general manager of Walt. Plus, we had a title match, which I'm happy it's the end of the Seth and the Ball feud. This is a view that never ends. <laughs> happy it's over. No matter who won this match, this was the last straw for Wilds in any partner. And we'll see what happens with his partner with him apparently getting hurt. But we'll see how that plays out in that match. And we begin with a match. The opening match would be the first of the two qualifying matches tonight for the men's chamber match. The three guys that qualified last week, Elias, Cena, and Braun, would fight in a main event to find out who would enter the chamber last. We would have Bray Wyatt against Roman Reigns. First, like I said, first qualifier, we had to begin with a promo from Bray. Talking about trying to be recovering from his recent battles with Matt. But he's focused on this, trying to get back in the Chiba match. Of course, last year when the Chiba pay-per-view was a SmackDown exclusive, Bray was in the Chiba match and won the WWE Championship. So he wants to get back in the Chiba match, where this time the prize for the men is a chance to fight the champion, Brock Lesnar, at WrestleMania for the Universal title. But, you don't know how this match is going to go, especially if they're reading the scheduled plans for Mania 34, so we know who was going to be in this match. Spoiler alert, Roman wins again, LOL. But despite knowing that, it was a good match. These two had decent battles before. It was a war tonight. A little war. And I thought we'd get a little interference from the Great War with Matt Hardy getting involved. Because he got screwed over by Ray Wyatt last week. But he did get involved after the match. But good fight between these two, good action. When we got booed out the building. Got his big moves in. Even tried to, he didn't do two big punch at one point, but then Bray Wyatt did do the sister Abigail after numerous attempts, including a reversal by a woman to a, a small drop. But that was the closest that Bray got to winning or making people falsely thinking he was going to pull the upset despite the predictable route they were about to take. Uh, that was, like I said, the closest thing. We got to sit to Abigail. He was going to do another one. And then, uh, Robin, that's where he went for the pounding. But then, after another attempt to sit Abigail, a second one, after the first one connect, after the first one connected many times, Robin eventually got the spear in the 1 2 3 victory for Robin Reigns. Entering the chamber match. We would see who would be the fifth man later on. But first off, we would continue on with a one on one match that would turn into a tag match. It was scheduled to be Finn Balor, representing the club, taking on one half of the revival, Dash Wilder. Trying to recover from their 50 50 booking last week when the revival beat the club. Had uh, the Royal Rumble after losing a wall two weeks ago. But they did want a wall next night, thinking the, the so called Barry on Wall was too premature to call it. But to make it punish tonight, because Scott Dawson tried to do a promo to make an attack match, he stumbled a bit. He usually revival very confident in promos. But I don't know what happened tonight, it took a little while for him to get on the mic. But basically he said, hey, we're not known for being singles guys. We're the top guys. Be that top guys, not top guy. We want to be a team. So Balor 
choose one of your club buddies and put it in a tag match. So they didn't want a singles match. So we had a tag match with Valor eventually choosing Carl Anderson to team up against the Revival. Uh, fun little tag team, tag team match. Follow up from that great match with the decent match with Wyatt and Woman. So yeah, and Revival got good double teaming early. You know, they look pretty good at match. Early half, you know, isolating. Battle in the corner. The isolation game. Great double teaming work. Traditional. Good old no flips, just flips. Tag team of the Revival. I hope they look better. I'm glad that just like two weeks ago, when the, the so-called barely happened in Revival, at least Battle Club got over because of it. And they got over again tonight. After the Revival hot shot, here comes. Actually, I think it was Anderson Isolate. Then, of course, hot tag came in the fin. Sling blades. It was a ball to the outside with Anderson taking out the other member of the Revival. Sling blade, the drop kick in the corner, the coup de grace for the victory for Finn Balor and Carl Anderson. Regaining their heat back from losing at the Rumble. You know, they, you know, the, the Gals Anderson, one on wall, 25. Then the Barry from DX, but at least they were standing with DX. Then they lost on Raw on the Royal pre show. With Revival getting the heat back, 50 50 booking. Revival beating Gals and Anderson. But then Anderson teamed up with Finn and won that match. So they got some heat back. We could have a Revival Club feud for a while. The old Battle Club feud. I would like to. Hopefully, we get Revival beating them up to get their heat back after losing it. They lost so much momentum from the numerous injuries they suffered. So, speaking of momentum, I think momentum is on the side of 205 Live. I think losing Enzo as the champion in the midst of the whip allegations and him lying to his employers about not letting him know until it came out to the public, it could be a good thing. Despite them canceling possible 205 Live live shows in California, Probably stemming from the fact Enzo's gone. They were trying to rebuild Tour 5 Live. They got a full on GM. Rockstar Spud. Not fucking Blade Maverick. Dumb decision. You're letting EC3 stay EC3. You're letting Wickleshay keep his name. Yet you would not let Rockstar Spud keep his name? And that'd be a different name on a Tour 5 Live GM? What's up with that? There was a report that her came in the GM, but it was Rockstar Spud. Fuck his new name. I was calling him Rockstar Spud. And the old ones are calling him Rockstar Spud. And they're having focus on wrestling again. You know, when 205 Live debuted, they've been watered down. They watered down the cruiserweights because they didn't let them, they didn't allow them to wrestle the matches like they did in, in, in the CWC. That's what happened with the women. When the NXT women first got called up the main roster, Sasha, Bailey, Fred, Becky Lynch, and Charlotte, they were not allowed to wrestle the message they were allowed to wrestle at NXT. They weren't allowed to go more than five minutes. They had to break those chains, take chances, make mistakes. And they did. And now, because of their efforts to finally break those chains and be allowed to wrestle the matches they were allowed to at NXT, we had ourselves the first women's Royal Rumble. The first women's town to sell. The first women's money in the bank. We're about to have the first women's elimination chamber match. And the Cruiserweights are finally allowed to break those chains too. They, uh, the first episode after losing Enzo. They had a great match with Mustafa Ali and Cedric Alexander. Reminding us why we love to see the C. And uh, the crown new Cruiserweight champion. They have a 16-man tournament. I can't feel bad for Cedric. He was going up for the title. He was basically the number one contender. They asked to go through 15 other guys to get the title he should have won. But he did win his first round match last week. And TJP beat Tyler Bate. Uh, we have Lindsay Dorado taking on Kalisto on, uh, on 205 Live. Then we got... Uh, Roger Storm debuting on 205 Live from NXT taking on Adair Otami. But tonight, we had four crews with attention. We have Senegal Alexander, who did advance. Teaming up with Mustafa Ali, their opponent. You know, they wrestled each other a few weeks ago. Taking on Drew Gulak and Tony Nese. Apparently, they're back on the same page. Because everything for the Zoltrain is erased now. Zoltrain basically broke up. 
off screen because of Enzo. So, a uh, good match here. It, it was a short match. Typical Walt Cruiser match. But they got a chance to shine. Rockstar Spud. Fuck his new name, like I said. Uh, he was on commentary. They were back at their stage being rebuilt after Braun destroyed it last week. Uh, the, the, the heels took over first. There was a good spot. They were nasty spot. Uh, they had some double team with uh, Seth Alexander was hang, hung up on the top rope. And uh, Drew Gulag did a little bit a nasty close off the top rope. We saw some nasty bumps last week of the, the suicide dive from Sasha and the bump that uh, Habal Cruz took. That powerbomb move from Sheamus is all last week. We got a nasty bump again by Cedric bumping his head from that top top rope clothesline. That was amazing. Actually, yeah, that was decent good like double teaming, so it was a cool little move there. But that nasty bump Cedric took, I hope he's okay, and I think he was okay because he got Mustafa in for the hot tag because of big moves in. Got some flying moves in before Cedric got the tag in. Delivered the love ball check into one two three victory for the good time good guy team. We missed the PowerPoint presentation, Drew. We want them back. Bad. You were over with that, boy. Hope they bring back PowerPoint. But I'm happy to see. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, going to be a long struggle. Because 255 has lost so much momentum. You know, Cruiserweight, CWC, they had so much momentum from that. And then they watered down the Cruiserweight to the main roster. But I think now with Rockstar Spud, and now allowing the Cruiserweights to finally wrestle the matches on the main roster, the matches... They were allowed to on the C Dub C. We had two matches last week. They were pretty good. I hope this momentum keeps up. It's gonna be a steady climb, a long climb. But I think to, if they keep this up, if they keep delivering good athletic wrestling every week on Two or Five Live, they could come back alive and will be buried by Vince. But now on to our next scenario with Cut Angle delivering the females who will be competing for the Raw Women's Championship. Inside the elimination chamber, Sasha felt confident she would be in, and so would Bailey, who was about to face Oscar a little bit later on. Uh, there was a rumored uh, spoiler of the sheet that it was going to be everybody with Nia, but it was finalized to be Alexa Bliss defending against in the chamber, both members of Absolution, Sonya Deville and Mandy Wells, Bailey and Sasha. And Mickey James. Yes, no Nia Jax. A lot of reports are flying that she got punished for dissing one of the Rousey. Hey, so that's Sasha, but she's in the chamber match. But whether it's punishment for Nia Jax talking shit about one of the Rousey, stealing the spotlight in the Rumble, or because her body won't fit in a chamber cell, but I think that's not right because Big Show's been in the chamber match. He's fit in it. But Nia gets another opportunity for another big chance. Uh, she would take on Asuka at the Chamber pay-per-view. Uh, they had a match earlier in the month of January, but the match went to no contest. So they got decisive victory, probably. And if Nia Jax wins, there's a huge stipulation. I don't think it's going to happen unless Nia wins by DQ. Then if Nia wins, she will be added to the Raw title match at WrestleMania. Even though Asuka hasn't made an official decision yet. It's kind of weird. You know, Asuka... Still has to choose between Charlotte and uh, Charlotte and Bliss, but she hasn't really decided yet. So they're assuming that Oscar's gonna choose Wall, and the Wall match would be a triple threat if Nia beats Oscar. Thus, there's a couple loopholes there they need to fill in the storyline because Oscar hasn't said she's going for the Wall title yet. We're gonna swerve us, and she may get Charlotte. But I will see what happens with that. So, but if they have this match and have Nia win, she'll probably win by DQ or count out. And not, like, we need a decisive finish. But I think Oscar will win. But if they make Oscar lose to Nia, it'll be DQ or count out. No pin. But I mean, we was about Ronda Rousey beating Oscar. <laughs> That'd be weird. There's like Goldberg beating Kevin Owens. Ugh, getting old guys over, part timers over. Ronda Rousey is the female Black Lives Matter. She only shows up to big events. Anywho, we have Alexa Bliss coming up next. She was angry at Kurt Angle for forcing her to compete in a chamber match for the title. Yet Brock Lesnar, and she did make a good point here. 
I defend my title in the Chamber match at the pay-per-view, yet Brock Lesnar does not have to defend his title at the Chamber match in the pay-per-view. Uh, that's creative control, Alexa. He only chooses to show up for big events. But she did make a good point there, storyline-wise. Say, Kurt, you're sexist. You're forcing me to defend my title and Brock gets to sit on the sidelines. Why do I have the same opportunity to rest at the Chamber pay-per-view and I have to defend my title, especially in the barbaric Chamber match? But at least Nia's not in it, so she's safe. From Nia doing some destruction, I would imagine Nia would have destroyed a, a pod or something she was in it. Like, someone dropped somebody or slammed somebody through a pond. Someone slamming through a pond. Whether it's a girls' match, they're saving that spot for, or have the spot for the men's chamber match, a pond's being broken. I mean, man, it broke. If both matches for the chamber, men's and women's, have a broken pond spot in both. But, uh, Wiz was giving Kurt a quip, and these are formal there. Hey, Bruce Bliss is the queen of promos in the women's division. And hey, Oscar can't speak for shit, but guess what? It's a language barrier, and she's very charismatic. Same with Nakamura. Like, people are like, these two are going to be the main events for Mania for their respective titles, yet they can't speak English, but guess what? They are more charismatic. They, all they got to do is just move their bodies and be athletic. So Bliss is still being forced for the chamber match. Speaking of Oscar. We have Asuka against Bailey. We knew the rivalry from NXT. They had two really good matches for the NXT Women's Championship in the spring and summer of 2016 when Asuka began her dominance as NXT Women's Champion, beating Bailey at NXT TakeOver Dallas. They beat her again at NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 2 in what would be Bailey's final NXT match. So, they once again put on a good match. It was as good as NXT matches. Very athletic. Uh, they were grappling early. Grappling early. There was trade submissions. Then the ball happened. Bailey was flying. So was Oscar Demon. He was delivering a uh, hip attack. The funky weapon from the apron there. But it was one spot. Where Bailey was flying. And she had a, a her Kawana spot from there. In midair. That was a cool spot there. She did botch it. Or get hurt like her friend Sasha did. The teeth to the heel turn, people. Hopefully she turns here in the chamber. Pull the trigger. Sasha's a better heel. I sound like a broken record. I keep saying a lot about Sasha turning heel. Not as much of a broken record as I was when I was begging every other week back in 2015 to have Charlotte and Sasha feud for the title. I'm glad they did, but I kind of regret it after a while when they pulled the hot potato a lot. Anywho. Uh, there was a good spot. Like... Bailey looked good in this match. It's best I've seen Bailey look in a very long time. They've been misusing on the main roster, and they decided to have her. We knew a while we against Oscar. Great decision. It was a great match. Oscar did get Bailey to by Bailey. That was the closest she got. The referee's off almost went down for three, but the off was just with the hand before Oscar kicked out of it. But despite Bailey's best efforts, she failed just like her friend Sasha did, submitting to the Oscar line. Proving that still. No matter who you are, nobody is ready for Asuka. So, uh, two good matches for Asuka the last two weeks. You know, match against Bailey was great tonight. And, of course, match against Sasha Banks. With the scary spot aside, was good. Giving Asuka some much needed momentum. We'll see if Asuka can do it. Uh, her match against Nia Jax back in January was good, even with a shitty ending. But... Maybe we'll have a conclusive ending unless they make Nia win to make it a triple threat. Even like I said, Oscar hasn't chosen a champion yet. They're just assuming that Oscar is going to choose Bliss or whoever is the Wall Women's Champion in the Chamber match, coming out of that match. But now we're on to our second of our qualifying matches for tonight. We would have an, another qualifying match made for next week. I'll get to that after we get to this one. Uh, the IC Champion of Bits. Flanked by only Bo Dallas tonight, I am assuming that Curtis Axel stayed home in Minnesota to watch the Super Bowl and watch the Eagles fly on to beat Tom Brady at Super Bowl 52 on Sunday. So that's why I, that's what I was guessing. But it's going to be that Miz had only one of his missed watch, yet his opponent 
Apollo Crews, and all the Titus Worldwide members, with the exception of Tozawa. Where the hell is Tozawa? Is he injured or something? Anywho, Dana and Titus was the company of Apollo. Just like the first chamber qualifier, I think we don't know who, how this one was going to end up. Miz had a promo before about beating Roman Reigns two weeks in a row at World 25 and last week in the obligatory rematch for the IC Championship. And he's proving that this is the year of the Miz. And he'll win this match. And he'll go on to go on to win the chamber match to face Buck. Do it. He had a Paul Heyman to push. But even though we knew the results of this match, like the first match, Paul Cruz did look pretty good here. He had some good spots here. He had some great hope spots here. It's good, good. Even a uh, double standing mood sauce. So, he looked pretty good here. You know, look best I've ever seen him. You know, they misused him on main roster. He should have stayed in NXT. Still, still hold by my opinion that he should have never left NXT when he did. He should have stayed in NXT a little bit longer again. Watched the main roster too soon. If it was lost in the shuffle ever since. Even if his tag team of Tyrus Williams got some surprise upsets over the club. Uh, the barn. I always get club and ball mixed up. I always confuse them. But I shouldn't. But anyway, despite the rallying effort from Apollo Crews, of course, Crews was going for a big move, got tripped up, ended up with the skull question finale and the 1 2 3 victory for the IC champion. There was no way. Like, Dallas Worldwide put some upsets before, but they're not going to pull the ultimate upset by having one of the members beat the Intercontinental Champion. No way, Jose. <laughs> so we have five of the six spots determined for the team match. Strowman, Roman, Cena, Elias, and now the Miz. How will the six spot be determined? Well, we found out next week we're going to ourselves a second chance Fatal 4-Way with Bray Wyatt, Woken, Matt Hardy, who did beat up Bray Wyatt. I forgot to mention that he did a little bit of twist of fate after Bray Wyatt lost. I thought he was going to get involved in the match, but he got involved after. Uh, we have Apollo Crews and Finn Balor. I am so happy Finn gets a second shot after getting buried by John Cena last week. So it's redemption time. Finn wins! So it's kind of weird. Like the last three, like the first three chamber matches qualified from last week. I think we all knew Elias was going to win, especially with Wyatt interfering. We knew Stone was going to be keen. We were hoping Finn was going to beat Cena, but Cena won again, LOL. And then tonight's Chamber qualifier, we knew Roman was going to win, because he's being tailor-made to win the Chamber match to face Lesnar and Mania again. <laughs> oh, Cena is not main event, and more probably, oh, Roman's not main event. Oh, the main event is AJ Nakamura. Unless they want to troll us and make AJ lose the title before Mania. They've done that before. Matches we want to see, then they fucking pull a left turn, like, oh, we're not getting this match now. Like a Survivor Series, we thought we were going to see Usos against the Shield. Yeah! Damn it, the ball won! So, Bob won the tag team titles again in, the, in November, right before Ambrose got hurt. We gave Usos against the ball instead of Usos against the Shield. But, civil lining with the new day against the Shield at Survivor Series. That was a civil lining. So, I hope they don't pull a troll move and have AJ lose before me. Huh? He's going to face either Owens or Zayn. They're going to fight over on SmackDown for who's going to face AJ and Fastlane. So, we'll be both of them. It's just one. But Finn will win the second chance. So, I'm happy he's in the gym match. A lot of people were predicting what would happen to Finn after losing the Cena last week. Will they be involved in the Chamber pay-per-view? But I'm happy he's, he's going to be in the second chance battle, uh, second chance Fatal 4-Way, and he's going to win it. If he doesn't win, bullshit. But then... Unto that tag team title match, the rematch, as the ball was scheduled to defend the titles against Seth Rollins and Jason Jordan. Now, Jason Jordan apparently had an injury. It was reported it was a back injury. But within the last few weeks, the last few days, it was revealed that it was more serious than we thought. That Jason Jordan's injury is actually a neck injury. And he was going to have surgery. So, two potential opponents for Dean, uh, for Wallens got hurt before Mania. It was supposed to be Ambrose against Wallens. That match got called off after Wall uh, uh, Wall Ambrose got hurt. But then it was going to be the replacement match. It was going to be Wallens against Jordan. Now that Jordan's hurt, probably going to get an injury, uh, surgery. 
Who's gonna face Wolves now? Mania. Maybe if we just be lumped in the other giant battle royal. That's what's probably gonna happen. Bye, have the mighty have fallen. That'll probably be on the kickoff show. And speaking of that, before we get to the tactic tunnel match and who replaced Jason Jordan, uh, they're gonna have this uh, cruiserweight tournament. They're gonna have the culmination of the cruiserweight title tournament at the WrestleMania kickoff show. I mean, WrestleMania. Hope it's not the kickoff show again. Cruiserweight should not be the kickoff show again, please, because they'll steal the show again like they did last year. Aries against Neville. Okay, we're never left because of Enzo, and Enzo got released. But before, back to the current. Jordan was going to face the, sh the bar with uh, Rollins, but his neck problems kind of storyline kicked off the match. But it was, we thought it was going to be written out like that. I thought it was going to be written out tonight by getting beat up or something, but he got written out another way. So Jordan was not medically cleared. So Rollins was going to bout the fourth at the match, but then a silver lining, a knight. In a bulletproof armor showed up. It was Roman Reigns. So it'd be Roman Reigns replacing Jonah Diva with Seth Rollins against the board for the World Anti Titles. Yes, Seth Rollins, and no matter who's his partner, has put on great matches with the board. But this is a fear that needs to end. And they got it fucking there. Because Angle put a stipulation that it win, lose, or draw. This is Rollins' last opportunity for the Tag Team Titles. And it was a good match. Once again, a fun high flying affair, hard the affair. Great double teaming from the ball. I love they did a double team. And then uh, Wallens and Am uh, Wallens and Waynes made fun of it later on by duplicating it. So it was kind of a little funny little jab there. Kind of like the funny jab Corey Graves had on Booker T. Apparently, a little rivalry. Say Booker T said that Corey Graves is the reason why he's gone for commentary. I'm meeting Booker T this weekend at a convention, Astronomicon. In uh, Stanley Hanks. But I'm not going to mention Grace's name. I don't want to get okay, out of there. Anywho, a good action from both teams. Wiles is flying, especially wants to win the titles in his home state of Iowa. Like I mentioned earlier, he is from uh, Davenport. Uh, he did fly for the Cub Stomp. I'm glad Michael Cole said he went for the Stump and not the new move, the Blackout. I'll still call it the Stump. I'll still call it the AADFU. And I'll still call the STF, the SCFU. Said it before. But as things were rolling, Jason Jordan came down the ringside. Uh, while he was in a precarious position, he got beat up. And he got tossed back in by his partner, who was medically uncleared, and tagged in Woman. Woman was not happy to see Jason Jordan say, Hey, dude, you're not cleared. Wallace got distracted for a bit. But then, uh, he ran, he ran for the grip point, and, then, and then that's when he was going for the moves. And then uh, Wayne got back in to the triple, trying to do the double power bomb. And this is all being pulled up by Sheamus. And then he came as Sheamus is always trying to walk out, get a count out. And at this point, I was like, this is going to be a screwy ending. They can't have Wallace get pinned in his hometown, even though we've seen a lot of hometown people lose their matches. And of course, you can't make woman lose clean. So, what they do? They made Jason Jordan beat up on both Sheamus and Zaw as they were walking out, causing this qualification. And Rollins and Reigns were pissed at Jason Jordan for doing that. So, I was furious to ending to protect both Rollins and Reigns, as if Rollins needs any protection, but Reigns does. And, you know, make woman look strong before Mania. Um, so they were pissed up at Jordan, and Rollins called him son of a bitch backstage. And Kurt Angle, the way they win out Jordan by saying they didn't let him, as I said earlier, they didn't have an angle where he was beat up in the locker room or the dressing room. Kurt Angle just basically said to Jordan, you're not medically cleared, just go home until you're medically cleared. That's, just, that's how he was winning out tonight, by being sent home by his daddy. Went with. So, uh, there you go. I'm glad the ball feud against Seth and any partner is over. Hopefully, they can solve a feud with Bound Club. That'll be too sweet! Now, in the two women's matches in the world, uh, Scushers. First, we had Nia Jax. And who would she have to face? Where do we got over here? 
Sorry to quote our storyline X, but hey, I have to. We have a cup. We have a job. We got a job. A cup of job. We got a job. Uh, some good name for Vanessa Floyd. Naya Wood delivered a promo to Oscar. Let's move on. Squash, you know, the story to go. Probably Naya wishes it was Grimm <laughs> from Grimm's toy show, but they settle the differences after. Like, Grimm makes fun of all the wrestlers on the team. But Peter got somewhat sensitive when he called Naya fat. And he's fat too, so. But that's another story. But then after that, squash, we have another little squash here with two women who are in the women's chamber match. We have Surya Deville, still being accompanied by Paige, despite the fact she's still probably never going to be cleared again. Well, at least she's still a manager, so at least we see her somewhat in a capacity on screen. In Manny Wall's company, her too, Manny Wall's is now the new acting partner for Gold Dust Mixed Match Challenge after Naomi, uh, Alicia Fox got hurt. The poker tailbone. So, Rose Gold, this should be the team to begin with. Fox should never team up with Goldie in the first place. Because now they only, have, they only have a week for Rose Gold to build up a relationship and they're going to lose some more against Naomi and Jimmy. SmackDown need to win the Mixed Match Challenge. Rose won all their matches thus far. Finn and Banks won. Oscar Miz won. And my favorite team, my pick, Beauty and the Beast, aka Team Little Big, Bon Strowman and Alexa Bliss won the best match of the series. Against Becky Lynch and Sami Zayn. That was my favorite match. And I love the chemistry together. They're awesome together. They should be a big monster doing this. By the way, Vicky James against Sonya Deville. Uh, okay, a little match. We know he's going to squash it, but wow, what a surprise ending this was. Sonya dominated early with an MBA style. But age comes before youth. As Vicky James would pull a web out of a hat. And near towards the end, as Sawyer was going for some big moves, got surprisingly rolled up by Mickey in the 1 2 3 victory for Mickey James. I was stunned by this. Now we thought this match was going to be somewhat predictable, like some other matches tonight. Sawyer Neville gets the win, but no, Mickey James won. <sighs> nice surprise. But then, Absolute was not happy with Mickey James winning. They beat her down. But for, of all people, Alexa Bliss made the same. Continuing her story from a few months ago when Absolution first beat her up when they first debuted back in November. And she dragged Mickey out. She a face. We'll see. But now on to our main event. Triple threat match to determine who would enter the chamber match last. We'd have Elias who sung the song. Even mentioned the Super Bowl halftime show. A lot of people meet me. Then should have been Elias during the Super Bowl halftime show. Because I walked with Elias. Out of my shirt on today. Because I wore it uh, last Sunday for my Wumble review. So I didn't wear it today. But I was singing a song about you would never visit a small town like Des Moines. But of course, you would have to compete in Des Moines against John Cena and Braun Strowman. Uh, this is a triple threat match. Cena and Elias were all rivals. They knew that Strowman is the strongest guy in this match. So, the majority of the first half was taking Strowman out. So, as Strowman was beating up on Elias and Cena, they got dragged on the outside. And Elias and Cena, like I said, formed an unruly alliance. They're like, hey, we gotta take the big oak tree down. So, I started teaming up on Strowman, beating him on the outside. Cena picked up the steps, nailed him with the top half of the steps before Elias would nail Strowman with the guitar and Cena would F you. Braun Strowman on the bottom half of the step, rendering Strowman powerless for the most of the match. He was laid out for the double guitar and table uh, step spot. So it came down and Cena and Elias battling it out for the last few minutes. And Elias almost made Cena drift away. But then Cena tried to his big moves, he would an F you. But he was doing the five moves of doom. You know, the shoulder tackles. But as he was about to do the you can't see me in the five knuckle shuffle, Elias rolled out of the way and he got caught by Braun Strowman. Delivering a power slam on the Cena. But right before Braun would pin him, Elias would get back up, drop kick Strowman out of the ring, picked up the pieces, 
of Cena being laid out for the power slam. One, two, three. Elias won! Yay! My dad and I were watching Raw tonight, but dad fell asleep during the main event. But before he fell asleep, he said that he was going to, he predicted that Elias was going to beat John Cena. Beat up John Cena! So Elias did pin John Cena. Because, like, like Strowman being last would have been obvious. Like, Strowman's already over. This loss ain't going to hurt him. Losing a chin might hurt him. Especially up against Roman, but still. This match would not hurt Strowman. But it should not have been pinned. So I'm happy that Elias gets some key back from losing to Cena at Christmas. In pinning Cena. But Elias didn't have much time to celebrate. Elias won the battle, but Strowman won the war. As he laid out both Cena and Elias with multiple power slams to end war on top. And showing why he, despite Roman being the predictable favorite, why Strowman is the wild card favorite. The unpredictable route to win the Chamber match. So, the fun triple threat is that Cena and Elias will team up. But I'm happy to say Elias gets a big win here. You know, just see Elias in a match with these two big guys, Cena and Strowman. A guy who's near the trial of his career, who's still a big draw in John Cena, and a rising young monster, and Braun Strowman to see Elias win, and get a cheap win out of it, you know, pick up the pieces after Cena got power slammed by Strowman, that was awesome. So, dang, at least Cena got Elias over, even though it was kind of a dirty win, not a clean win, but hey, I'll take an Elias win over Cena any day of the week. And that's karma for you beating Finn Balor, bitch. You wouldn't let Finn Balor get over you, but let Elias get over it. But Finn will get his heat back by winning that Fatal 4-Way match next week to win that second chance Fatal 4-Way to go on to the gym match. So at least he'll be in it. He'll probably do a coup de gras for the pod. He'll probably do that. Guarantee. I guarantee that a pod will be broken in either one of the Kiva matches. And Finn Balor will do a coup de gras on top of a pod. Guaranteed. It's going to happen. Those spots are going to happen in the Chamber pay-per-view. Uh, February 25th. But well, less than 20 days away. So, uh, there you go. My wall review. A little late tonight, but it is what it is. Thank you so much for watching. With that in mind, you've been attacked by the review from Zach. See you later. Bye-bye.